What if you wake up one day and the nightmare is over and finally the folks at Pantone had some common sense? Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. And it's one of my favorite times of year when the folks at Pantone announce the color of the year for the upcoming year, 2022. And the color is very Perry. Isn't it beautiful? Very, very Perry. <laughs> okay, so the name, <laughs> like, okay, I just want to be in the room when these folks sit together and do this. And of course, in my imagination, it's like a, a whole host of human beings across the planet sitting on some high mountaintop and around a conference table and you know, very angsty decisions and people running in and handing reports and paperwork and diagrams and everywhere. And they're like, finally, very Perry. That is the Pantone color of the year. Very Perry and everyone applauds and throws paper in the air. Like children across the world leap into jubilation and families are crying and happiness and the sun rays come through the clouds. This is really, really involved in my mind. I hope the Pantone folks take notice, maybe make a short film about it. It would be really cool. So when the color of the year comes out, the reason why I get so excited about it is because it gives me the perfect opportunity to continue a philosophy that I followed for a long time as an artist, and that's to evolve every year. And I talk about this all the time in the videos on the channel, when I teach at conferences and my students and so forth, I tell them you have to evolve. You have to evolve as an artist. No matter what genre of art you're in, you need to constantly evolve. Now, there's nothing wrong with having your, your go-tos, your favorites, your best practices that you love to do, and certainly fall back on that in times of stress and anxiety. If you're in the middle of a, you know, if you're in the industry of photography and you're in the middle of a photo shoot and you, things are going wrong, the weather's changing, the subjects aren't cooperating, you don't know what to do, yes, you can fall back on old habits to be able to get through that anxiety, but you've got to be able to evolve to explore new concepts and ideas. And evolution and change are never easy. And if it makes you feel uncomfortable to change, you're probably doing something right. When I constantly try to look at the work that I'm doing and evolve as an artist, there are many times where I boldly say, I'm gonna try a new lighting pattern. I'm gonna take one of my favorite lighting patterns and turn it on its head and see what's possible. And when the first 10 minutes of doing it, I'm like, I hate this, it sucks. Like throw my camera down and flip over a table. And I'm like, I'm never gonna change and do new things. And then I keep doing it. And eventually I'm like, hey, this actually sucks, but at least I tried it. Or sometimes I'm like, hey, this is really cool. And I add it to my pantheon of work and, and my toolkit and trying to go forward with those ideas. So the Pantone color of the year is a wonderful insertion point to ask yourself, what can you do with this color? What, how can you incorporate it into your artwork? If you're a photographer, you're a digital photo editor, a graphic artist, can you start throwing this color into the mix of your editing and your artwork and see what it produces? And that's ultimately what I do with the color. Now, my style in Photoshop and my, my color grade, my artistic style, that is something that I evolve every year. And one of the first elements that I evolve is color. And I generally refer to the Pantone color of the year to do that, unless it's that horrible, horrible yellow. Horrible. <sighs> Frightening. Anyway, so this color is something that I'm excited to dive into and I want to explore today with you. So first, what I want to do is I want to go into Adobe Color and I want to show you the color itself and its complements and so forth. And we'll start exploring the color there. Then we're going to dive into Photoshop. We're going to look at a graphic that explains the overall feelings and emotions of color so that you can kind of get an idea of how this color can be applied to the work that you're doing as an artist. And then we'll look at some real practical examples of it with two images of mine one photographed in the studio, one shot in natural light, and see how the Pantone color of the year, the very Perry, gets into the mix of my editing, and then how I use the complements of it that we'll discover in Adobe Color to bring it all together. So with that, let's dive into Adobe Color and take a look at very Perry and see all of its complements, its triads, its compounds, its analogous colors, and just go on a color adventure. It's so exciting. Ooh, it's so much better than that stupid yellow. 
Now, if you've never been to the Adobe Color website, it's a wonderful resource for color management to be able to look at the color harmonies and just explore new palettes that you can create. Whether you're a digital photo editor, if you're a graphic artist, whatever you do in art, it's a wonderful site. There used to be an extension for the a color editor in Photoshop, but for some reason, the good folks at Adobe decided to get rid of their own extension for their own resource, but whatever. So if you wanna to go to Adobe Color, just simply go to color.adobe.com. It's again, a wonderful resource. Now, the uh, very Perry has been loaded as our main simple color. And if we look at the analogous colors, we can see all of these beautiful purples and these blues. And this is something that again, this just obviously speaks to my interest because blue is my favorite color followed by purple. So I'm just a happy little boy here in 2022 with color. Maybe this is a sign that 2022 is gonna be a fantastic year and human society is gonna be able to leap past the pandemic and all the issues that are destroying our societies and just bring it to a utopia like Star Trek and it's gonna be great. Very Perry signals the future of Star Trek. Anyway, so with the analogous colors, we can see this. Now, typically when you're looking for color harmony, you wanna to go to complementary colors. So when we look at the color complements, blue, we go to the opposite color, uh, opposite side of the color wheel, and it's in the yellow orange family for whatever types of blues that you're looking at. Now I've talked about that in previous videos and education that in uh, Hollywood cinema, typically the color grade you're going to see is teal and orange because they're opposite of each other on the color wheel. So the human subjects in the scene have orange in their skin tone, and then there's usually some sort of teal worked into the shadows and in the background, so you have that harmony. So in this case, looking at very Perry, if we want to go to the orange families, if we're thinking about human subjects in our photography, these two colors, they certainly work in the theory of, of complements. However, it's just not something that is jiving with me. So I'm looking at the other options. So typically one of my go-tos is the triad. So when I want to look at the split of the color wheel based upon the color that we chose, we've got this tone that's getting us to that human skin tone. And that certainly could work. And I explored a little bit of that. But when I went to the compound, and this is essentially looking at how the compound splits, staying where we aren't trying to go too, too far in the color wheel. We're trying to stay in that family to find those complements here and looking at this is our sample. It's finding the direct complements and then going from there is to, to compound and jump off of it. We're getting a human skin tone here that actually I think will work well with the very Perry, at least for my artwork. So looking at this code here this is the code that you can put into photoshop into the color picker and that will give you the very peri this is the code that we would want to use to be able to select that color itself so that we can use that as a complement and again that is one of the many assets and uses of adobe color so i can't recommend it enough but now that we know the complement that i'm choosing to look at and you can certainly look at the others and see what resonates with you again just looking at human skin tones and so forth as i worked with these colors they weren't quite jiving to what I wanted but when I came to compound and found this one I really liked it and we'll explore some of the reasons why when we dive into Photoshop and let's do that now this is a chart of colors in different regions across the planet and what these colors represent to those regions. And I love this chart. I found it a long time ago. It's called International Color Symbolism. I don't know if this is like the official chart. I don't know if there's a, another mountain somewhere with a conference room group of folks who made this whole thing up. But I've referenced this chart many different times over my career because just being able to look at how certain colors have spoke to different societies over hundreds if not thousands of years is very informative to me as an artist. This can be the single source of inspiration that leads to an entire photography shoot and artwork, especially when I am, for certain when I'm, I'm uh, developing a shoot and I'm looking at the mood board that I've created and looking at different samples of costumes and ideas and then I start creating a color palette, I will reference this chart because I'm asking myself during that development phase of a shoot, what are some of the emotions that I want in the storytelling of the artwork I'm about to produce? And those emotions, I refer back to this chart, or emotions or state of being. I look at this chart and start looking at different societies and how it speaks to them and colors that I could potentially subtly infuse into the artwork. So let's go through a few of them here for the color blue. 
which the beriberi is kind of in that color family. So for Western culture, the color blue can represent trust, loyalty, authority, conservatism, business, peace, calm, depression, sadness, and masculinity. And going on, Eastern culture, immortality, wealth, self-cultivation, Europe, trust, uh, truth, I'm sorry, responsibility, fidelity, and serenity, the Middle East, safety and protection, Belgium, traditionally used for baby girls. I love that because, again, in Western society and North America specifically, we typically associate the color blue to the gender of boys but in this case it's tradition in belgium it's assigned to baby girls uh cherokee so first nation of the united states and north america defeat and trouble that's interesting to me defeat and trouble you would think of the color red as an angry color for defeat and trouble and the sadness of it and so forth but for the cherokee it's uh the color bl hold on blue so for western culture trust and loyalty is Associated to blue is trust and loyalty, but then for Cherokee, it's defeat and trouble. <laughs> There's a TED talk in there, but we're not going to go through that. Anyway, uh, continuing forward, China, uh, immortality, femininity, Egypt, truth, justice, virtue, faith, protection, reproduction. This is fascinating to me. And again, this can be the inception point of an entire storytelling series. When you just look at some of these feelings, especially, I mean, I, it's, it, I said it tongue in cheek, but if we think about the First Nations Cherokee, if I was doing a, a series that I wanted to have deep societal impact to not only to the First Nations, but to the other societies and nations uh, across the world, thinking about how blue affects them, how, how it is ultimately, how it speaks to that society. This is a wonderful way to be able to intelligently and artistically use color in all of your artwork. And it is something that I think you should go to that level of creativity in your work, because the more that you add these intrinsic elements, the more that the value and impact your artwork will have to others. And that's a wonderful thing in art making. So I suggest you find a chart like this. I, I, I don't know where I found this chart. I just found it a long time ago and I've always used it and referenced it. But let's look at some real world examples now of how I'm going to use Very Perry and its complement that we found in Adobe Color to be able to incorporate it into my artwork. This image is from a series that I captured a little while ago, the wonderful talent you see in the image. Her name is Astrid. You can see more of her beautiful artwork by visiting the Instagram account at the link below. There's going to be a speed art video coming to the channel on December 18th. It's a Saturday that will take you through another image from this series and showing you a couple of uh, problem solving steps that I went through to finish the artwork itself. So. Here is how I typically incorporate colors into my artwork, specifically the Pantone color of the year. I typically use those colors with solid color adjustment layers and then incorporate different blending modes in Photoshop to be able to infuse that color into the artwork itself. So I'm gonna make a solid color adjustment layer by coming down to the adjustment window, solid color, and then it brings up the color picker. Now, when I'm in the color picker and my mouse is over it, it's just a regular mouse, but I move the mouse outside of it, it turns into an eyedropper tool. So I can sample any colors that we see in the picture or elsewhere, specifically color swatches. Now, color swatches are a wonderful way to keep track of different colors that you're working with on different jobs or series of work that you're producing. If you don't have your swatches window active, just simply come up to window and then down to swatches and check it. So with this, I've already, created the swatch for the very peri and then the complement that i found in adobe color that i want to work with so to be able to set this solid color adjustment layer to very peri all i have to do is just click the swatch and now it's set it in the color picker and then you can see it on the screen it's filled the entire image because right now the solid color adjustment layer is on a blending mode of normal before we change the blending mode i want to show you some of the data here that we see in the color picker and what this data means as far as choosing a blending mode is concerned so when we look at the first set of data here for hue it's at 239 degrees great saturation 40 percent brightness is at 67 percent why is this important because different blending modes do different things with whatever you're using whether it be an adjustment layer uh, the layer background layer of the subject itself it has different functions so understanding why things work in photoshop is very important which is why i harp on it all the time and say that constantly that you need to learn why things work in photoshop so typically when i use solid color adjustment layers in the past i've used blending modes like lighten screen color dodge, and very rarely do I use blending modes of overlay and soft light. Why? Well, soft light specifically, its job is to take any color that is darker than 50% gray and make the scene darker. Any color that is brighter than 50% gray, it makes the scene brighter. 
So in a case like this, if we look at very peri, because the brightness is at 67%, that's above 50%. So this color is gonna make the scene brighter by using soft light. When you use a blending mode of like Lighten and Color Dodge, it can affect the image in, in very different ways that's more stylized than what I want to do in 2022. I don't want to go for too much stylization. I'm wanting softer colors. I'm wanting softer uh, contrast and tonal values in the work that I'm doing. And this is exciting to me because not only is it the Pantone color of the year, but because of its brightness quotient, it's going to be higher. I can use that blending mode of soft light and really beautifully bring it into the artwork itself. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now that the solid color adjustment layer is set to it, let's look at some of those blending modes that I was just talking about that I don't want to use anymore. So for instance, lighten. It's going to use this color to try to lighten up the document, specifically all the darker tones, and it's trying to lighten it with a color. And so in this case, it's, it's very stylized. If I reduce the opacity of this, which is what I would have typically done in the past, I'm able to lighten up some of those darker tones. But one of the consequences of this action is that it's also giving the image a matte effect, M-A-T-T-E. And it's leaching out some of that contrast, that dark black point within the scene. And that's something I'm trying to change in 2022. Now, if you've seen any of the previous videos on the channel or seen me speak at conferences, I talk about how I've always loved the matte effect in images. And it's something that it's hard for me to break myself of that. I still use it in some artwork, but my goal to evolve as an artist is to start bringing in more contrast. So this blending mode of lighten is something that I just simply can't use because it's creating a problem that I don't want to overcome. So looking at screen, same thing. Again, we're still on an opacity of 40%. Screen, it's making everything a lot brighter. Color dodge. Now, color dodge is letting a lot of the contrast values come back and through that rich black point. We're getting, again, that very stylized effect. I'm not saying I won't use a solid color adjustment layer of very peri on a blending mode of color dodge in the future. It's just not my first leaping off point that I'm interested in exploring as I adapt my style in 2022. I'm looking for a base, a vanilla ice cream, if you will, before I start adding all kinds of interesting stuff to the ice cream to make uh, a insulin spiking sugar coma adventure. So let's go on now to soft light. So at soft light, because it's brighter, it's making everything brighter in the scene, but not to that extreme that we saw with light and color dodge and screen and so forth. And this is what has me so excited about this color because I can infuse the feeling of it into the scene in a very subtle way and still stick to my goal of having that deep contrast value, that deep black point within the scene. And of course, even if I increase the opacity of this to 100%, we still have the contrast point. We have that more moody feeling to it now. So in this regard, thinking back to that list of colors and the different states of being and emotional states across regions across the planet, you can see now in Western culture, I could start seeing how a little bit of depression could be associated to this, that, that calm or depression or more somber feelings, uh, more, more even level playing fields instead of things like loyalty and so forth. Um, this is how it can be infused into the scene. But changing the opacity from 100% down to like, you know, again, let's go to 42%. We get that subtle little infusion into this. And it's just a wonderful way to work with this color. But let's add the complement now in the same way and see how it fuses and how it creates more of that harmony. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this uh, solid color adjustment layer. I'm hitting Control or Command and the letter J to duplicate it. And then I'm going to double click the color picker. I'm sorry, the, the icon for the solid color adjustment layer that brings up the color picker. Then come over to my swatch and click the complement that we again found on Adobe Color. Look at that. Like, I love this. This I, I'm really excited. I was not excited <laughs> going from 2020 into 21. I mean, 2020 with the pandemic, we really needed our spirits lifted. And the folks at Pantone were like, let's lift them with yellow and gray. And I was like, you people are morons. But now I'm super excited because look at this. Look at the mix of this. And it is specifically the mix itself. It's the blending modes, of course, but the mix. If I turn off very peri, now it's too yellow. It's too jaundiced yellow, and I just don't like that. I don't want this. But that mixture of very peri and that yellow together, they're incorporating to create a beautiful new color palette that I'm very excited to work with in all of my artwork simply by just making two adjustment layers, which are common basic tools inside of Photoshop, understanding how blending modes work, 
using these two colors that are being driven by the folks at Pantone. So let's go on to another real world example. This is an image of my wonderful friend Danielle and her fiance Nick. They are both friends of mine. I, I absolutely adore both of them and I love working with them. This is their engagement session. It was an honor. They asked me to do it and I was very excited to do it. And this is a naturally lit image photographed at sunset. There's no off camera flash or anything like that. I was using the Canon uh, R5 with an RF24. Actually, no, I was using my RF50 1.2 Prime with the Canon R5 to capture this image. And so it's been retouched, but no other color grades, nothing else has been done to it. And now, as you can see, I've already incorporated the solid color adjustment layers into it, but getting that beautiful, warm feeling. Look at this, this dreamy tones where we see that warm, inviting colors and that very peri that's a wonderful combination with those two colors together that simply with one without the other, we would not have this effect and feeling. So both of these are on a soft light blending mode, but these are at a hundred percent opacity and I, I reducing it to 40%, let's go ahead and do it. I just don't think it quite has the same impact. So we're going down to 40% for very peri and then I'm going down to 40% for the uh, yellow complement that we found on Adobe Color. Now this is less impactful, it's more subtle with the color infusion into this and I certainly will be using that depending upon the impact of what I want for the artwork itself. But if we take this back to 100% for both of these, I just, I love this feeling. I love this look. I'm gonna turn uh, the very peri off again, it's too yellow. If I turn the yellow off, it's more into that, you know, this could be, uh, at that golden hour sunset, we were starting to get some of those feelings of nighttime of the moon and so forth or whatever else. You can again look at that chart of emotions and states of being and how blue is into the scene. But if we incorporate these two together, I just love this. I love this feeling. And we could go even one step further and use luminosity masks on either one of these colors to really fine tune the colors into the artwork. And spoilers, that's something I do all the time. And that's an upcoming video that's coming to the channel where I'm going to show you how I use a program called Lumenzia by Greg Benz to be able to use luminosity masks to incorporate colors into scenes and get that subtle feeling into it. So covering the Pantone color of the year, very peri, seeing that compliment, seeing the chart of color of emotional states of being and so forth and how we can infuse it. But just looking at these examples, this is, this is why I'm excited. This is why I'm excited for 2022. One of the reasons why I'm excited for 2022 and how I'm evolving as an artist. So let's finish up this video today with some final thoughts, tying it all back to the very beginning. And, and on a very serious note, I, I, I cannot stress enough how important it is to evolve as an artist. And you don't have to drastically change everything in what you do, but find one or two elements that you can evolve and change and explore. And something as simple as the Pantone color of the year, finding ways to incorporate it into your artwork. And it doesn't just have to be in digital photo editing. If you wanna look at clothing options that you can photograph, if you're a fashion photographer, Start looking for clothing options that have very peri in it or the analogous colors, the complementary colors, and seeing how you can create an entire series of images based upon that spark of creativity that's associated to that color. And that motivates change for you as an artist. And that change, I promise you, it's a ripple effect that just concentrically goes out and out to affect your art and how your art affects everybody that sees it and the message that it communicates both as the artist, as your brand and beyond. It's so important to continue to evolve. I know it can be daunting and frightening, but we've got to persevere and push through because if we don't continue to evolve, we're not going to discover all of the possibilities that we can do, that we can achieve in our time here on this planet and our work and what it can do and what we leave behind with our work. So that's the end of the video today. If you like the content you found in this video, please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content comes to the channel each week in photography and Photoshop education. And when you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you're notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks for watching today. And until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.